Welcome to the Rising Tide Podcast with D. Klein and Eric P. Rhodes. Each week, the Rising Tide Podcast brings you the latest stories from a world where art, technology, and culture converge. Ride the wave of the future with us. The tide is rising, and the possibilities are endless. Hey, man. Hey. We had a stretching out here to get started. Yeah. <laughs> this is an awkward had, pause uh, right at the that's beginning. Okay. <laughs> After we just got done, like, all right, let's get right into it. Um, <laughs> so we had a good call on Thursday. We can get into that. Um, I think that'll be really interesting. But how was the rest of your week? It was it was good. Yeah, uh, I'm gearing up for my fall workload here, you know, getting ready to get back into the, the teaching stuff and hopefully doing some writing stuff, too. So that's when does goal. when does is it mid September that it starts for you? No, no, it starts like our first day with kids next week. The teaching Ooh. is Thursday. Oh, right here. August 29th. Okay. Yep. Wow. wow. Uh, so, you know, I'll go in on Monday and just start getting things ready over a few days and then we have meetings and stuff oh yeah super fun i i it's i'm in that state where it's like uh okay it's okay to go back but it's kind of like uh it's a you know anytime you have an extended break and you come back yeah there's a takes a little bit of like um getting used to the rhythm again yeah but i'm not one of those people that's going to complain i know i have much longer holidays than most people do. So <laughs> that's good. That's real good. <laughs> but no, it's good. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been a uh, it's been a busy week. Uh, there's been some crazy stuff going on in the news. Where do you want to start? Um. Wow. Let's start with the well. You know, things. Something that's been top of mind for me a lot lately has been how lucky I am to live in America where we have the Mm. first amendment. Um, I was also criticized on another platform for not knowing my first amendment rights, which didn't make sense to me. Um, Hmm. What did they feel that you didn't know? I was explaining, well, unrelated to crypto Rutgers had put out Rutgers is a school where I go to graduate school. Sure. Had put out its, and it's a public university, so therefore it is considered a government actor. Um, and therefore it's bound by the First Amendment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can't be, you know, uh, your rights can't be trampled on by the entity itself, criticizing it, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, long story short here, I was simply saying that the Rutgers policy However, they want to um, adjudicate, not adjudicate, but however they want to determine when and where free speech can indeed be free, because they put out a policy that basically said you need to fill out a, uh, what was the word they used? Um, It was hilarious, and I'm not going to be able to pull it up now because I really wasn't planning on talking about this. Um, But basically it was like, free expression form you had you had to fill out a free expression form interesting to notify the university that you are going to do a, some sort of protest okay uh, and then you had to have a free expression permit in order to hold the protest so not only did you have to submit a form to the university and let them know that you're going to protest which is an okay, okay policy, not a bad policy in general. Um, but then they have to decide whether or not to allow said protest and give you a permit for it, which is where I See, sort I, of I like, understand the logistical part of it. First part, I, of it, I understand a lot where the you know, kind of, hey, you know, like these and these things are going on. It's not going to work at this particular time or venue. Correct. But, yeah. But the content of the pro- protest, that's a little more questionable. Right. And they're not saying that they're approving the whether or not they're going to have to approve the content. They're saying whether or not they could, you know, protect 
the school, protect the, the public. Okay. And uh, my fear is always that they're going to use that as a shield to uh, not approve dissenting voices. Anyway, long mm. story short here, I simply was telling somebody that said, well, the school's policy doesn't trump the first my First Amendment right, which gives me the right to protest the peaceably and the right to free speech mm -hmm. on the campus because it is a public free university. And they said, I didn't understand my First Amendment rights. And I was like, mm, maybe you're a more censorship, pro-censorship kind of person. But anyway, that that conversation ended up, the moderators ended up cutting that conversation. Not where I wanted to go with this. Mm. Where I wanted to go with this conversation was we've seen in Europe, uh, specifically in uh, the UK now, where people are being jailed and potentially prosecuted for um, their speech online, either sharing memes or sharing what they whatever the government considers to be inappropriate to be shared at their will and whim. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's pretty that's that's scary enough. But now in France, we saw the telegram the, the founder and and head of Telegram, Pavel Durov, who coincidentally holds French citizenship, which is, which I think is a key element here um and one of the reasons they were able to detain him and didn't have to extradite him mm -hmm, um, is because mm -hmm. he is a french citizen which means he's bound by french right. constitutional law and all that kind of stuff france does not have a first amendment in the way the um, the united states does right what they do have is something called and i i brought this up the declaration of the rights of man and citizen uh it was Codified in 1789, I'm going to read a, a sentence here. Every citizen may accordingly speak, write, and print with freedom, but shall be responsible for such abuses of this freedom as shall be defined by law. Mm -hmm. So they're so it saying kind of leaves the door open for, and which is how yeah. I think they're getting. Um, one of the reasons that they were so easily able to get a warrant to, you know, arrest Mr. Durov, his arrest is contingent on the idea that he was not, uh, he was not helping the French government curtail, um, like sex trafficking and drug trafficking and all that kind of stuff, which is basically they're trying to hold him responsible for other people's actions on the platform. Right. And he refused to, moderate which is what this is really coming down to mm -hmm. uh and my guess is refuses to give information mm -hmm. like who are who are these accounts because where does that lead or certain channels access to certain chats? sure sure i think he is a free speech absolutist based on his um actions but this is uh we are living in a very interesting world where we're seeing europe mm -hmm. uh sort of fall into um ooh, really i don't want to call it marxist behavior maybe um trying to shut down the voice of other people and you know maybe it's not marxist but um anyway it's very interesting what's happening over there and i feel grateful that my grandparents came from italy brought my mother here and i got to be raised in a country where uh, the government is not afforded these sorts of rights to shut the citizen down for their voices. Right. Well, I mean, you enjoy a unique privilege in the States. Yeah. And many Americans forget that. Oh, I, I'm reminded of it every day thanks to the content I see and what happens across the globe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Let me be a devil's advocate, though. Okay? I like, I like taking the other side of an argument. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw a good argument from somebody on X comparing, they gave an analogy uh, where they said, uh, imagine you own, this is Sean Linehan, says, imagine you own a large apartment complex. France says, it's a legal requirement to put microphones in every room and let us listen to whatever people are saying in those apartments. And you say, nope. People in my apartment complex should be able to have their own private conversations and then they arrest you. That's essentially the digital equivalent of what's happened 
the digital equivalent is what's happened to Pavel Durov. Having said that, okay, and here's my devil's advocacy part. Say, for example, that same government says to you, hey, we know this particular unit in your complex is tied to criminal activity, terrorism, child trafficking, etc. Okay, we need access to that room to be able to tap it in order to catch these people. I don't know if I'd really have a problem with that. If it's going to shut down those nefarious actors, it's a little bit more of a dilemma to me. Now, I understand the principle of privacy and free speech, mm -hmm. but there are practical limits to that when on the flip side of that, you've got, like I said, child trafficking, uh, terroristic activities, mm -hmm. uh, plots to assassinate or etc. Right. So there's a point there where I go, hmm, I don't know. I think I'm okay with that. Let's talk about that middleman though. Yeah. Let's talk about the apartment complex owner. Right. Is it their responsibility as a, as a private citizen to help you investigate? Now, that's a, that's definitely a dilemma. I don't know if it's their responsibility per se, but I would think in a situation where you know there are nefarious activities happening, which surely Pavel Durov knew that. Sure. There's a point where you go, hey, I can't have this happening here. But couldn't we make that assumption about every room and every... Isn't... No, I think, you know, like if you look at, for example, when there's criminal activity, you need a warrant. Okay. Sure. Uh, and if you're living as a law abiding citizen in your home and you're not suspected of criminal activity, police can't just walk into your house. Right. They need to prove right. with good evidence. Hey, we need to look into this person's operations in their household or whatever, because we think they're tied right. to criminal activity. In and which they case can... they can get a warrant. Yeah. And they can prove, Hey, we need to be able to, intrude on this person's privacy so to speak mm -hmm. so in a case like this could you not say now of course i don't know how that works with warrants or whatever with with private messaging platforms mm -hmm. but i'm just saying could there not be a sort of digital equivalent of a warrant to say hey we have good reason to believe this person's involved in nefarious activities we need to get into this room so to speak sure and in which case is that bad no and they are free to do that in whoever However, they are capable of doing that. Right. So I'm saying, but so me if I think the, of if I think of a channel in Telegram as right. a, a, an apartment or a room, uh -huh. and I know there's very high ev ev there's evidence that this is being used in an, mm -hmm. in an illegal way. You go, hey, we need to get into that room. Right, but you wouldn't go to me as the apartment owner. No, I mean, how else do I get access to it? You don't need my permission anymore. If you've got access to bug the room, you could enter however you... Cause what, you're not my gonna, point being, in this case, you, you do keys. need to go through that middle person, right? You do have I don't to think you do. Telegram. No? How no, would they do I mean, it without I that? don't need to give you the keys. Like, why, why would I have to give you the keys to investigate? I'm not responsible. So how would they then access that if they don't have that in the case let's of Telegram? Let's assume... Let, let, what, what really is the issue here is he is not making it easy enough for the French to get the information that they want. Right. They have to actually investigate and maybe... Mm -hmm. But maybe they uh, have. Maybe they've done all those things. Right. But maybe then they need people who can, I don't know, um, social engineering, get in those channels. Okay? It's not his responsibility, I don't think, to open those... Because then we open those channels to whenever they decide that they want to get into it like hmm. i don't know why man. it's a why tricky one it... for me like if it if it was involving you know like something like child trafficking or slavery i think I, that outweighs it i understand the extremes and and i because this is they... what we're talking about here correct correct and i i understand those extremes but if you are You're making it my responsibility as the owner of the platform 
to do your job and investigate. And I don't think that's my responsibility. I'm not responsible for people's well, actions no, I, on the I'm, platform. I'm saying I, my point is they've already done the investigation and it's a, a equivalent to say the point where you issue a warrant to enter private property. Uh-huh. Right. And let's say somehow that apartment owner is the only person who has the keys to allow you to enter that apartment right. somehow. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like they're at the point where, okay, we're issuing a warrant, let's say, to uh-huh. get into these channels on Telegram. And he's okay. saying, no, you can't enter, even though you have justifiable reasons to enter. Let's take this a step further. And we're talking about physical property. Where are these servers being held? Well, I'm not getting the, the parallel. Sorry. Well, if it's not on French property, then the mm-hmm. warrant is, uh, in my opinion, not viable. Hmm. I mean, but he is a French citizen. Sure. He's a French citizen. And under. And under their rights, they seem to be able to say he can be held responsible according to their Declaration of Rights of Man for what's happening on his platform. His mm-hmm. fault for, in my opinion, and this is, it's his fault for not being able to, I think, uh, for being a French citizen in this particular case. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Isn't it uh, ironic that he had more freedom in Russia <laughs> And he does coming into Europe. That's just yeah, really well, strange he, to me. Well, actually, he left Russia because right. they were going to try. They want. He refused to give. He refused to shut uh, shut down the voices of Putin's opponents. On okay. His yes. No. You're right. Social yeah, media. That, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, the guy has a history of like yeah. being on the side of uh, free speech, yes. sort of absolutist. Right. I, I understand the analogy you're trying to make. I just don't think like if my neighbor happens to be a uh, child predator and I know about it, right. I am going to like do something about it. Mm -hmm. Right. But maybe I don't know that that guy is a child predator, but you're going to hold me responsible because of the conversations that are being held in that. No, see, that's where I think the threshold is to me. Okay. Yeah is it's again the closest thing i can think of is when the police issue a warrant at that point in time essentially yep. it's been or investigators let's say not the police investigators have issued a warrant at that point in time they have evidence that points to, i agree right and so yep. in this case in the case of telegram they had evidence that links this activity there's some they didn't just like do this on a whim like they there is stuff they're linking here right and it's at a point where you could say hey like we need access to this information and again i want to i don't know exactly where i stand on it i i'm yeah. i struggle with it because i i agree with the principle of free yeah. speech and a right yeah. to privacy yeah having said that when you know someone is using it in a way that's hurting children hurting innocent people, um, enabling criminal activity, and you know it, and you know that's going on, there's a point there where I think, hmm, I don't know okay. if that applies. Let's take, let's take it to, to a home that you live in with a thousand people, let's say. Let's say 500 people. Okay, like an apartment okay. you're talking about. No, 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 let's say you all live in a single home. You oh, all okay. see each other. A big home, right? Okay. Yeah, it's just for this hypothetical scenario. Um, okay, I could see how I might be held responsible being an active participant or an active uh, observer of nefarious act- activities. But just because, just if I own the home and have no idea what's going on inside of it, even though I might have an inkling, it's not still my responsibility. Because what what if what if I'm wrong? What if, like, do your job, police? Anyway, I get, I think, I get... Here's my point. I think they have done their job. I don't think they just did this out of the blue. Well, let me read what, what the BBC has written why uh, he was arrested. Okay, okay. You know, educate me. Yeah, Mr. Dorov is accused of failing to take steps to curb criminal uses of Telegram. Hmm. The app That's is accused... Big. The app is accused of not cooperating with law enforcement over drug trafficking, child sexual content, and fraud. So do they have actual incidents of those criminal activities to which they are 
linking this? That's what I wonder. Or is it just well, that, general? It is, it is intentionally vague. And it, right. even their arrest, I believe his arrest warrant was intentionally vague as See, well. See, that's where I do have a problem. Right. Because what, the, what it sounds to me like is they want the ability to observe mm -hmm. whatever is going on on the platform yeah. to catch people in the act. And what I think he is saying is, no, do your job mm -hmm. and catch them. But don't, I'm not just going to give you access because you might have an idea that something is happening on the platform. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, to me, like the threshold would be if they, if they knew it was linked to certain activities and mm -hmm. it was like, okay, we, we need to access this in order to get these and these bits of information. Yeah. So personally, I don't have a problem with it at that point. Yeah, this um, particular instance this is sounds about a little vague, content though. moderation. It's about content moderation. Yep. It's not about specific activity. Mm -hmm. He's being arrested for not moderating content on his platform. Mm -hmm. It's so, basically I mean, what I've learned. Obviously, there's there's a, quite a lot more incidents of this kind of behavior on other platforms like Snapchat, Instagram, etc. And sure. there's t statistics to back that up, that there's more of those sorts of incidents. Yeah, it's um, not just happening on Telegram. Having said that, those organizations have been compliant when asked Presumably. to kind of hand over this information, right? Have they? I, I don't actually know that. Uh, well, uh, at least according to some people, like, say, Elon Musk has said, yeah, no, these guys have, have just handed over this stuff, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, like, say, Zuckerberg or whoever. Right. <laughs> so... What they've handed over exactly, I don't know. Is it like the thing where there is just a listening device in every single room in an apartment complex? Or is it on those particular suspected accounts that they're listening in? I mean, they can't yeah. realistically listen to into every sing, a single account out there. That's like mathematically impossible. Well, let's let's talk about like the technologies that the NSA has that we know they have. Mm -hmm. If they're given a back channel, they could use ML and AI to... Sure flag Filter keywords things, at a high yeah. at a high rate so by listening i want people to like think about we're not i don't think when we say are they listening are we thinking that there's that one dude and they're listening to a mafia conversation on a phone <laughs> right, yeah. you know in, in the, the truck in with the, the spinning dish on the roof you know right 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 <laughs> we're talking about like mass surveillance of yes. people and yeah. where does it stop no it's true no, where it's does it stop I guess so like, to me, it's just more nuanced. It, of course it is. Of course it yeah. is, which is why this is a challenging conversation to have and why people um, will listen to me and listen to you and like they'll they'll hear my perspective and be like, well, you're allowing rapists and killers to get away free. And it's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I we we in in what you just pointed out, the conversation is absolutely nuanced. Yeah. You know? And it's not a matter of giving the government, I think, it's not a matter of giving the government, any government, the ability to mass surveil for for the extremes, for what's happening at the extremes. I think there needs to be more due diligence on the side of the government. But they, I constantly hear from experts who are mm -hmm. like, well, you know, a lot more, I was talking to somebody on, on LinkedIn about, AI. Oh, this will tie into this. Um, I was saying like how I don't think regulation of AI is uh, we need to be careful about stifling innovation in favor of regulation and giving the giving politicians and governments the ability to access um, what they would consider high risk AI plat AI AI uh, software and AI technology for them to use at their leisure without the citizens having any say in it. And they turned around and said, well, Mr. Rhodes, uh, we should look to the European Union and their AI Act. And every time somebody says, look to the European <laughs> Union, their proposed AI Act, I think if the European Union is what we're looking toward, we should just look at what they're how they're treating social media right now mm -hmm. it's only going to get worse for ai could you imagine being arrested because you made a deep fake that will happen in europe 
That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, there's I'm a, off my soapbox. There's a post here. I don't actually know this person, so I'm not. I don't know where they are on the political spectrum, but their name is yeah. uh, Ava Vardingerbrook. I don't know. But this is a good quote. They said, we should be the ones knowing everything about the government, not the other way around. Transparency is important. We yes. are private citizens. They are public servants. We pay them in the form of taxes, yet they treat us like potential criminals who need to be monitored 24-7. It's an interesting point. Yeah, well, the government has a long, well, I'd say the American federal government, because I don't know, I haven't lived in any other uh, place long enough, mm -hmm. um, has a history of keeping the public in the dark. Right. Um, for safety, for whatever, like the, 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 um, ostensibly anyway. Right. What is, after 9 11, they, we, they enacted the Patriot Act. Right. Right. Which like gave the government carte blanche to do any number of like surveillance activities for, and it was just sort of a roadmap. It's kind of bizarre that that didn't have more constitutional challenges. Uh, well, they used the sympathies of those after 9 11. Sure. Um, to, to, to pave the way. And now that's been, that's, that has since been, um, I think the Patriot Act had a time limit that's that's gone away, and now, but all those technologies and services that they delivered under that time are still around. Wow! And even if it gets rescinded, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stop doing it. Correct. Yeah, and that. But remember, this is why Snowden is is in hiding in Russia, right? Because he he highlighted what happened, what the NSA was doing, and mm -hmm. still doing. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think, globally, we run the risk of being comfortable with continuing to give away freedoms for perceptions about safety and like people are um, and government is protecting us. Right. Like, you know, anyway, it's just very interesting that we continue to give away our freedoms. I often say that um, as long as we have the second amendment, uh, the First Amendment's not going anywhere anytime soon. But the moment that they take the guns away from the citizens, it paves the way for the First Amendment to get ousted. Because how mm -hmm. else, like, other protections I've persist. Always, you know, being, being not an American, I've always thought that that's a bit of an idealized perspective of the Second Amendment. I mean, let's get real, Okay. Are you actually capable as American citizenry of overthrowing your government with the most powerful military the world has ever seen? Okay. Like, let's face it. The okay. average American mm -hmm. takes out their, their arms, let's say, and says, okay, I've had enough of this government. We can't stand for this. Mm -hmm. you're, you're coming up against a military that's enormously hear... powerful. How are you? Hear, how are you resisting that? I hear you. Um, force. It's it's about force. Mm -hmm. There's still the possibility that there will they will be met with force. Let's look at. We could look over the last forty years. Forty years? Yeah, since the eighties. Look at what Britain has done to get rid of gun. The, the UK has done to get get rid of guns, and now look at their their free their their rights. Sure. Their their free speech rights are being trampled on, and and now they're taking away specific types of knives, like they're totally just fucking. Uh, in, I don't want to call it emasculating, but they're they're. Yeah, they're emasculating their citizenship, um. By taking their ability, even that even that ability is still there. Like that's force though? being met with force. See, that's what I question. Sure it is, of course. Let's look at Australia. They did the same thing, and they're they're dealing with uh, rights issues as well. Sure. I would say pretty much any relatively advanced nation in the world is dealing with those rights issues. Yeah, not here. So not not from the government. We're seeing it from from the citizenship where mm -hmm. we are we are battling out about what 
socially what's the right way to handle um certain dynamics and right. with re with regard to free speech and what is right to say and what is not right to say but not the mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. I mean, it, literally, Directly. like half of your country is pro gun controls, pro uh, controlling this speech that's happening on these platforms. Yeah, and the the other half is half, pro guns. Half, and your current government is in favor of the half that prefers gun control. Sure. So, I mean, I don't know if it's as simple. It's going to be very it, difficult to rescind the amendment. They're not. There's no yeah. way that they could rescind the amendment. No, I don't um, think that, but I think they, you know, it's, it's certainly open to interpretation. Sure, sure. But I, I think it's it's not a matter of direct. Okay, if if the U, hypothetically, if the U.S. government decided to go after the other 50 percent. Uh -huh. do, do you realize how psychotic that would be? Well, I'm just saying, like, look at a uh, fast forward a few months. Let's say hypothetically at Harris Waltz wins. Right. You're and then we fall me, into communism. <laughs> you're telling me you're not going to have the same sorts of issues that people in Europe are having with that government? No. no I think you not. will. No, not directly really? from the government. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I Go think on. it would be really difficult for um, the Fed or even local governments to arrest people for their opinions online. That would go against directly against the uh first amendment what they can try to do and what has worked is deplatforming right okay using 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 uh lobbyists as a way to as a middleman between both the uh the government and the platforms or the companies in order to enact sort of like favoritism towards one party or another we've seen that we saw that at Twitter. I was there when it was so left heavily leaning, mm -hmm. and it was a, it wasn't a bad place to work for ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Sure. But if you were anything other than pro a certain, cert, which is why I never let my political opinions known, right? Because I I was I came from the East Coast. I was left on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, I would be considered more centrist okay right like ju just based on the dynamics and i just i didn't let my political opinion show because i didn't know what kind of retaliation there would be because leadership all the way up was so heavily left-leaning mm. um almost to an extreme level as we saw with their deplatforming of trump right yeah, it's anyway. a there's an interesting cartoon I saw on X that says, What do you need rights for? Are you up to something? Leftist yeah. proverb. <laughs> you know. <laughs> there's <And> a it... <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> they use like that that guilt, like yeah. you should oh. give up your rights because mm. you know you want privacy? Uh, what are you doing that you don't do you want people privacy? to know about? Right. Ooh. right. Could you imagine? I think what we, we should tie this all in is, is and why this is important in crypto is uh, open source and decentral open source uh, protocols mm -hmm. and decentralization uh, protect to a degree um, the ability for information to be disseminate, disseminated. So like if you're in a country like the UK where you can no longer um use primary social media platforms somebody can always develop another one to disseminate information mm -hmm. decentralized sure it may not be as popular as twitter or you know others out there but the point is is that ability to to disseminate information is persists which is really what i think the french and maybe the uk are after is control over the messaging mm -hmm. so why don't we take a break here? I know. We yeah, let's do that. We went we went uh we got political again. Yeah. Uh, we maybe we should um rebrand. Yeah, I don't know, man. And I I don't here's the crazy thing. I don't like talking politics because I don't really want people to know where I stand. Uh because I don't want to be canceled. I'll put it right out there. I don't want to be canceled for some flipping comment I know I can make. Sure accidentally so i'm mm -hmm. like so careful about 
And when you go hypothetical, I'm I'm like, okay, I don't want to be too extreme here. <laughs> I don't want to be like somebody to misconstrue and say, oh, Eric wants all the rapists and killers to go free and be rapists and killers. It's like, no, that's not, let's not fucking, you know, let's not be, let's be critical. Let's, let's have some critical thinking here and realize that we're just debating about the hypotheticals. Anyway. Let's, yeah, let's... no, and I think anybody listening knows that we're positing arguments and not necessarily taking a side of a particular issue. It's more about yeah, I think most people the are. issue. Yeah, I think most people are. I think that there's always that one who's yeah. going to clip and be like, <laughs> "Can you believe mis- they said this?" What a misogynist. Anyway, <laughs> I see. Okay, talk to you in a minute. So, um, one of the things that I think is is important here is i'm a dummy and i don't know everything yeah i'm a learner same yeah so um you know take nothing i say as as a form of expertise but in learning and with that being said i often say marxist uh, but in my brain marxist goes to socialist goes to communist Mm -hmm. and so like when i when i say marxist i actually often mean the, the ending of what communism could look like. Um, and so I just want to, to, because I had mentioned that a couple of times and I want to make sure that people understood my train of thought there. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm a dummy. I don't know everything. Um, just, you know, trying to be informative to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> On, Hey, you know, it's, it's a complex topic and, I think it's worthy of discussion. Certainly. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. You, you had a, uh, you had, no, definitely not experts. Um, hmm. You had some things that you wanted to bring up. Yeah. Well, there was one that's just a quick one where I got a message f- and this is not necessarily a novel thing. I got a message from a person, Marcelo underscore C A S M or Marcello maybe. M-A-R-C-E-L-L-O underscore C-A-S. Mm-hmm. Uh, very legitimate looking account. Um, 14 and a half thousand followers. Um, has uh, many, many people who I also follow. He's followed by like almost 500 others that I follow. And Not so an usually- insignificant amount. Yeah, like usually if it's not a legit thing, that's your tip off is like, okay, yeah. nobody I know is following this person. So they're just mm-hmm. going to try to scam me with a, a link to like X2Y2 or something. Hey, I want to buy your art. Click the link here and agree to it with your wallet or whatever. Right. Uh, but this is a little more sophisticated than the usual ones I've seen. I don't know what's happened. Maybe they've somehow got a hold of this person's account. Um you were saying that maybe it was purchased at some point. Sure. Accounts, um, dead accounts can be purchased, especially if they were scammed away from other yeah, people. They're active um, in their posts. They're not just reposting. They're posting mm-hmm. stuff with their artworks. They're like, it seems like everything points to this being a legit account. Uh, and they did message me and say, Hey, can I, you find a few minutes to chat? I have an interesting idea for working together. I'm like, uh, we, we followed each other, I guess, at some point. Um, so, uh, although now it says that I don't follow him. So I don't know if I unfollowed him and just don't remember doing that. Uh, but anyway, all I said was, oh, I'm intrigued. What did you have in mind? And I just left it at that kind of thing, right? Because I was just mm-hmm. curious. Okay. Um, but another person took him up on the conversation and he got back to him and went through a whole series of ideas about collaborating. And he was getting a whole bunch of artists to work together with him. Um, and then the attack, he says, Hey, yeah, just log into this, whatever app, you know, and it'll, you'll download it to your computer and then we're going to work from this. Right. And that's where, of course, you know, like what I'm not downloading some unknown app to my computer. That's the spidey senses right there. Right. You know, um, and then at that point, of course, the wallets on that computer were compromised and this person who shared about it shrink is uh their handle is adam of god like a-t-o-m of god mm-hmm. um and they kind of showed screenshots of all these dms of how he was victimized and that lost all of his funds from that wallet 
Um, that sucks. It's terrible. It's terrible. You know, now personally, I would just suggest you don't do these kinds of chats and download apps on a computer that has any crypto on it, you know? Um, but I, uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really unfortunate. And it was, it is one of the better ones I've seen in terms of it being someone who looks legit. That right there is the, is the definition of social engineering, right? Like that whole interaction. Yeah. Um, not to be like kudos to the scammer, but that's a very big effort to get to go through to scam someone. Yeah. I don't know how you do that at scale. Uh, I mean, hey, this in this particular case, he got something like 70,000 US out of this one person. Wow. So, yeah. you know, if he's doing that one out of 100 tries, he's making good money. Like, yeah. We were saying offline about how, like, op like Operation OPSEC, Operational Security, is super important. And we're privileged enough to have multiple devices. This device here, as we learned, uh, as you learned on Thursday, my other device that I do crypto on never comes out of the house, doesn't leave, you know, is not directly always connected to the internet. Um, it's locked down. Like if you're going to, I always, I would always say, if you're going to be your own bank, you have to think about security yep. like a bank would. Well, and this just brings me back to what I've said before for the casual person who just wants to be invested in crypto, just get an ETF. <laughs> yeah. You don't have, have any yeah. of these stresses. Yeah. Or, I mean, even at a minimum, like Coinbase, right? Like Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know that goes against some of the principles of self-custodying and all those things and being your sure. own bank. But if you're just like, hey, I believe this technology is going to grow in value and I want to invest in it, just go along those rails and you're going to be a lot safer. Yeah, let's talk about that dichotomy real quick. Not that mm -hmm. we were intended on talking about that, but there is the the technology aspect of decentralization and then there is the investment aspect sure and it's clear that the investment aspect has taken over the narrative absolutely yes um uh, I, I mean maybe it was always gonna go that way anyway i don't know mm -hmm. that we could have foreseen that mm -hmm. but the the reason the technology was developed in the first place has sort of been swept under um the narrative and now we're advocating to a certain degree let's say if mm -hmm. you're just looking for investment do an etf do like some do coinbase don't like don't worry about getting your own you know ledger and all that like just play at the surface level because you're only setting yourself up for more risk uh if you're not going to take it as I don't want to say as serious, but if you're not going to be aware of the risks. Well, like I've inherent. known people years ago, for example, who were victimized with, you know, on the Facebook. Hey, if you want to invest in, if you want your crypto to pay and they get sucked into a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Right. Where it's like a Facebook post saying, yeah, well, if you put your Bitcoin into this platform, we are going to earn this and this much interest. And it's like ridiculous interest. It's like. 4% daily interest or something where it's like, what? Okay. That's yeah. not, that's impossible. Right. And they lost their funds, you know, because they were naive. Um, and they thought, well, too good to be true. Doesn't really apply in this space because there have been many examples where things happen that seem too good to be true, but they actually did happen where people made a fortune, you know? Uh, yeah. But you know, but you only ever see the front of house stuff, even on, even in crypto, nobody's te teaching you or telling you about really what's going on behind the scenes yep. in the back of house, all the losses. We all want to talk about all the good, the good successes. Yeah. I'm just saying that's where people who are naive yeah. get sucked in. Yes. Yeah. Well, now the technology has transitioned to a point. I would say where 
those people can now safely invest without having to those people we're talking about mm -hmm. who uh can can relatively safely invest and get exposure without having to uh take on all the risk yeah exactly so i don't know i just i feel like for the average person again i've said it before who just wants to kind of dabble in this mm. just start with the safest rails yeah yeah even collecting nfts let's say you want to collect an nft use a coinbase wallet is that your recommendation i think so it's just safer easier yeah I mean, the reality is we know even if you did go the route of, oh, uh, say having your own wallet and everything, have you seen known origin lately? Like it's all frozen now. You can't, like there's no sales happening there anymore, right? Like if yeah. you go on known origin now, all the things that were priced before are just there and you can go to OpenSea yeah. and it'll just show like known origin asset. It doesn't actually even show the the work there from what I saw. Oh, really? They shut down. Yeah. Uh, 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 I could be wrong. But when I last looked, it uh, didn't show the actual work when you, you know how it says, look at it on OpenSea or whatever. If I right. click view on OpenSea, it just says continent not available. And it just has a known origin asset icon there. So if you didn't save the art artwork itself, it's potentially lost? I don't know. Um, or it's like a time, uh, it's frozen on so on known origin. You can look at it on known origin. Okay. Right. No, now another one here, when I look at it, it did show up on open C. So yeah, uh, I, I, would look at, I would look at the token ID and see if it's related to, okay. No, the um, one, you know what it is? The ones that are sold show up on open C. Interesting. And the ones that are not don't. Maybe. So I wonder if there was something going on in the back end where the token didn't technically mint until it was sold. Right. Yeah, that's possible. That that would make sense. Let me look here. Yeah. I mean, this isn't really worthy of sh share screen sharing. Hmm. No, some of the oh, some of them are showing up. I don't know. It's strange. Mm. Okay. Something to investigate. Well, yep. eBay has given up, at least for now, on uh, on supporting this form of e-commerce. Um, mm. So, you know. Hmm. Yeah, no, it seems like some of them are showing up and some of them aren't. I don't know what the situation there is, honestly. I wonder it's if it's file type, potentially file size, depending on where it was saved. Yep. It is sad though. No origin yeah. was my favorite platform. Yeah, well, no origin seemed, uh, in my mind, it was third, right, among the the mm -hmm. platforms you wanted to be on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Super Air, Maker's Place, and then No Origin. Yes. And then everything else came after that. Yep. Uh, and then, then also there was a period of time where everybody wanted to be on. Oh, what's the one with the twins, the Winklevi and the, Fo the Gemini. Cock Fosters? Gemini. Yeah. Is it Gemini? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the, there's twins, Cock Fosters. Yes. Is them. And then they were, they were, the Winklevi were invested in them. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Anyway, that was kind of an aside. Yeah. But uh, I did want to talk about... Uh, recent success on super rare have you seen this trend no uh well there's a person on x named lost wisdom .eth who posted this it says sentiment on super rare is at an all-time high driven by the platform's recent updates including the removal of empty auctions from artwork activity tabs the ability to add edit cover images and series descriptions updates to username email and settings logic relocating the dashboard and settings to the profile menu updating the minting page and upgrading the back end for tips. Additionally, several pieces have recently been sold on Superware at Super Rare and goes on to list some of these major sales. And some of them are for substantial funds, uh, including one by Nori Harmon sold for two ETH just recently. 
Legendary um, artist. Yeah. Legendary um, artist. Uh, Batsupium bought a piece by Micah Johnson just recently. Um, and these are not like these are, for example, the one that Batsupium picked up was uh, Black Astronauts Cry by Micah Johnson for 3.5 ETH. Hmm. Um, so not small amounts. So uh, NFTs are back? Question well, mark? if you look at the post, it's showing, it, and I, I checked this out on DAP Radar. So if you go yeah. to DAP Radar and you just search up Super Rare, you can look up their activity and it has jumped substantially in volume and uh, transactions, uh, moving from averaging around eh, two to 300,000 uh, dollar kind of range on a, I guess a daily basis to, mm-hmm. I'm not sure about that. It's showing up by the dates. Uh, to most recently, it's on a steep climb up, heading towards $1.8 million I of, see that. Uh, volume. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely a strong trend up there. Um, if you're looking at trends, it's the value substantial. Of, the value of rare has also gone up. Mm-hmm. So I think there might be some correlation there. Right. So like the seven day volume on super rare over the past week, $1.96 million hmm. up 703%, 704%. Would be interesting to see the breakdown of what the purchases are being made. in. I, I think lost wisdom has it here, but it's a lot of rare uh, yep. being used to purchase. So yep. in, you know, that's sort of, it's an economy propped up by a free token that was given away. Oh, fair. But it is trading at value. Yeah. I mean, the, the token has raised has raised in price. I'm not saying that there isn't value there. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Interesting. It's interesting. I think a Super Rare is continuing to do things to make itself relevant and mm-hmm. keep itself relevant. Mm-hmm. Um. The tricky Especially part being we, because it is relatively low volume, it's very easy to have a very dramatic jump up or down because the volume is relatively small. Yeah, well, they they are the they're a gallery. Like yeah. If well, that's the mindset you have to think about in Super Rare, it isn't a platform. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's a digital platform that's a that acts more like a gallery than a than a open platform like Rare or Open C. Mm-hmm. They're just not in the same stratosphere in terms of like who they're targeting, what the audience is, all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's just interesting to see, you know, we kind of joked about NFTs being back. <laughs> um, but then you do see activity like that on the most prestigious NFT platform. It is promising. It is and... prom- but, it, you know, it's a lot of the names though, the same, you know, Anyway, go ahead. You were saying. Well, I was about to say, I don't think this necessarily trickles down to the wider NFT creator population. We're, we're thinking along the same lines right here. Yeah. Um, like Batsup Yum, you know, buying a Micah Johnson who's, you know, well known in this particular space and has moved, has crossed over to the traditional art world. Mm-hmm. Um, Nori Harmon fantastic artist been around a long time lawrence fuller um uh, producer extraordinaire you know yep. um known outside of this industry you know yeah these are well established names yeah 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 good, great so a good signal mm-hmm. that artworks are being valued but what's being valued is is um you know sustainability it seems like yeah yeah and i mean i suppose that was inevitable Mm -hmm. that it would filter to those blue chip artists at some point of course i've always what's my famous line that money was never meant for you right when when people would get upset about how like x copy is making this you know, why aren't they buy? It's like that money was never going to you. Never, right. ever. Right. Um, they've earned that. Lawrence Fuller, Batsup Yum, 
Micah Johnson, Nori Harmon, they've earned that that valuation. Mm-hmm. So good for them. You yeah. know, I'm I think it's a good signal. It like, I feel like it is a good signal, nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. yeah there are there's value in digital art. That's what it tells me. Right. Right. Like NFTs aren't dead, just you know, 2021 is dead, which we we know. And we've been warning people for three years, stop chasing the fucking dragon. It's not coming back. Although, I am having a lot of fun, more fun on base mm. than I thought I was going to. Okay. Now talk to me about your return to, to base. Well, you know. And to Farcaster, I think, is the other thing that comes with that. Yeah, so, so my return to Farcaster is like, I don't get early 2020, 2019 vibes. Okay. Um, I get something different. When I came into the crypto NFT space, I wasn't coming into the crypto NFT space. I didn't know that was the space I was coming into. What I was looking for were people who were techie like me and arty like me and like doing things about crypto. That's all I was looking for was like potentially my people, you know, I found them, um, lost them, lost the vision, got stuck on. I had 15,000 followers and that meant so much to me because I had worked from 81 to 15,000 and like I was stuck on 15,000, 15,000 through a series of whatever mindset shifts come back to Farcaster I'm just having fun again, talking right. about all kinds of things, you know, right. I'm not worried about that. The blog I'm writing isn't for that audience in passion. I'm passionate about it because I'm leaving something behind for my nieces and nephews, my nieces and nephews. And I'm sharing that. And that's fun again. Uh, I'm cutting up old podcast for the clips of me and putting it on Dracula. Cause that's fun again. Like, the things I said in 2021 on podcasts. So freaking hilarious. You know, uh, <laughs> just, you know, I'm, it was an place... optimistic time. I was, well, <laughs> not for me because I, well, maybe for me, but at the time, apes and punks were ripping. Right. And and I had poo pooed <laughs> on both of them. Right. Because I was like, I'm an artist. I don't, you know, I'm too highbrow for that stuff. Right. You know, and it's like, Looking back, looking back, I was, uh, that's my dog. Can you hear him in the background? It's okay. Um, what's up, nephew? My nephew's here. Oh, yeah. Hi, nephew. Um, what was I saying? It doesn't matter. But look, <laughs> looking back, I was saying some, like, I was just, you know, I was right about apes to not, and wrong about punk still. And and that's that's a risk you take. Sure. But Farcaster has been a lot of fun. It's just a community of people who are builders and techies and some artists. It's not as art heavy as like Twitter, but there are some artists on there. Um, but I'm just having fun being around like techie people and artsy people and like where I get to sort of be my nerdy self again. And and again, it's it's a small, darker, it's a darker corner of the internet. Yep. Where most people in my life aren't seeing any of this. Yes. Um, that feels a little bit more freeing, mm-hmm. especially since they know that I uh, had such a failure in what I would call a failure in the broader scheme where I lost tons of money and almost starting from zero, you know, in crypto. and You round tripped. Yeah, round trip, and now I'm I'm back. You know, I'm on Farcast. I'm just enjoying myself, and like, there's cool things you could do on base with. J- I think it was Jack Jake. Um, he released something called Base Colors, and you can mint colors on chain. Not that not that different from anything we've seen on Ethereum. Um, but now it's like people are creating smaller apps. You know, little apps that will analyze your profile picture generate the colors and then you could mint those colors if you wanted to and you know, it's just like and it doesn't cost the the cost is minimal yeah you know two bucks yep 
like it's fun again to play. And and remember I had talked often about how I wasn't sure about bass. Mm-hmm. I still think Ethereum mainnet is the right place for most one of one digital art. Yeah, totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. But the ability to play with composability, yes, at scale at speed, is really great on bass and yep. other L twos too. So like, you know, I'm having a little fun there. It's fun. Did you hear about Sony's new L two Sonium? No, stop. Really? Dead serious. They're making a. They're making one for gaming. And uh, an Ethereum L two and EVM. Yeah, Ethereum L two Sonium. True okay. story. Built, it's an op yeah. stack, I think. Optimism. L2. Okay. Well, here we go it, down the, you know, the the benefit of an open platform. And then we'll have centralized L2s for various capabilities. That's great. I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the challenge has always been with blockchain-based games is like, is this a good game? <laughs> right and it's always been the focus has been on oh look you get to collect Earn these assets tokens. or speculate yeah. on these tokens or whatever it's like yeah but you don't need a shitty game along with that to do that right right but when you get someone like sony entering that and promoting it and like if you look it up they're they're into it um sony Who'd have thought a year or two ago that Sony would be building their own L2 for, for gaming and media? Like, that's pretty cool. Um, and they, they know how to do that stuff. They know how to make it have a mass appeal. What's and the they also that- will make it in a way that people won't necessarily even be aware of the blockchain side of it. Which it's is just what gonna we talked be, about. It's just going to be a good game. That abstraction, uh, that abstracted yes. layer, right? Uh, yep. You're just going to log into something and you're going to be playing something and there's going to be blockchain stuff in the background. That's going to enable certain cool features that you wouldn't normally have. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you want to happen with this stuff. So so they can create an entire gaming ecosystem where skins can be shared across games. Totally. Um, I mean, like, I think that's the vision that that I always had for gaming. And I I, I talked, I, once tried to explain where I worked in mm-hmm. the crypto space to my younger nephew when he was like eight. And I was like, could you imagine on Farcaster? I mean, on Farcaster, on um, Fortnite, if you could play your Fortnite skin on, you know, 2K NBA, you know, on a LeBron James, you're like, that'd be so cool. I'm like, that's the capability that we're trying, like the, part of the gaming industry is trying to work toward uh-huh. it's nice to see a big guy like sony come in uh to try and do that, that well, i can think cool. of an example from my own life now i'm not really into video games anymore but yeah when i was i was being a canadian i was super into playing nhl games from mm-hmm. ea sports mm-hmm. and i love playing those games and for a period of time i don't remember which console it was i feel like it was ps4 that era um with NHL, there was a way you could join a, a league where they seeded it with like 10 bucks a player somehow. It was some promotional thing. And you could bet that money against other players when you'd play them. And you could win money, like actual money, by playing your opponent and beating them. And I'll tell you, those were by far the most exciting uh, NHL games that I ever played and it didn't have to be a lot of money it yeah, was like a buck or two on the line. the line yeah right and you were like like I remember being just like my hands shaking on the controller and being sweaty and stuff which I never really get that way with video games and I just think of something like this with Sonia where you appeal to uh, maybe a more adult market let's say and you incorporate things like I don't know, USDC or whatever. And you have monetary awards for gaming. Mm. Like uh, mm. that's that's a huge market. Now, do you do you do run into gambling stuff, right? And age, you run into age restrictions. Age restrictions. Um, 
Yeah. So I don't know exactly how that gets dealt with. You know, there's parts of the world that are more open and conducive to that stuff. You know? Yeah, I mean, like in Europe, you have the GDPR and like, you know, I got to be 13 to access certain parts of the internet. Right. Like, yeah. I think those regulations, some they exist. It's just sort of how do you how do you regulate for them already? Right. Now, I mean, I guess if the on-ramp is something going through, like, say, something like a Coinbase or something like that, then you can kind of filter out some of it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know a lot about the Sodium L2, but I think it's just the fact that it's going to have a broader appeal and, you know, is a good thing. Sonium. That's a pretty good name. It's not bad. No. It's kind of um, awkward because it has like multiple vowels. It's like S O N E I U M, I think. Well, they're clearly playing. It's it's a Portman. I think you call it Portman Do. It's just they're putting two words together. Portmanteau. Portmanteau. Yeah. 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 Sony and Ethereum. Yes. Sony. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's yeah. interesting. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Do you um, want to talk let's... about pods? I was just about to transition to that i love perfect it. yes yeah speaking of uh layer two technology we had a fantastic call with the team at pods.media which they allow for us to put our podcast on chain it's cool yeah 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 you were super impressed with i was super impressed with now granted you were the one kind of doing the stuff because of your opsec you know you had multiple devices happening but yeah. i was just impressed with how seamless and smooth it was it looked to me like really no different than experience of putting a podcast on spotify for podcasters it was it was not pretty different. much the same i freaked out because i saw a big like uh i saw it was a, a five second freak out, but I saw a whole bunch of fields and I, and in that moment I was like, Oh fuck, I have to convert the MP3 now. Ah. Like that's where my mind went. But what you're talking about is since we had already uploaded it using the Spotify platform, uh, RSS. Yeah. And it converted it to MP3 already. We yes. ju and we, w we ingested the, rss feed into our account all we had to do was select the latest episode and it filled everything just in. from a drop down menu and it was just i couldn't believe how simple it was yeah and the team was fantastic um really really my really cared uh i was a little bit i say hectic trying to trying to get you know my other device connected you did and great like, yeah yeah, yeah. No, i didn't say that were, okay good they were really um and they were at a conference they took the time yeah. to yeah. talk with us while it was they were like at a 45 minutes an hour yeah they onboarded it, us for an hour um yeah. and we have some i think now we could begin to play i don't want to say like play with our audience but like now we can engage our our crypto audience in a way that is very crypto centric. Yes. Um, you know, we're excited to play with that. We're excited uh, for like sharing the episodes maybe a day or two early, mm -hmm. you know, for those who want to mint it. You know, I just think it's cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Um, and who knows? There's just all kinds of possibilities that come with that collectible side of it, with the tokens and what yeah. they might do in the future, or what we can do with them in the future. You know, also being artists, you know, there's ways we can link that to that possibly. Um, that it just opens up a lot of very interesting possibilities, and it feels authentic to me, being that we are crypto focused, to be on chain. So, and yeah. it, it is something that's. It's not something of the old, you know, just even two, three years ago, if you were to do this, that whole experience would have been painfully slow. Uh, just being able to go on there and like even collect a token would have been like, you know, hours of figuring things out and waiting for certain screens to load. And yeah, so and forth. we would have had to mint our own contract and then yeah. make sure the contract was, uh, it just, yeah. 
Whereas now, so really, much. your experience is really not much different from a Web2 podcast platform as a user. Like it's... Yeah. yeah. And this is the benefit of being on L2. Yeah. So uh, if you go to pods.media, it'll show uh, podcasts there. And then you can collect a token from a podcast. And there's lots of different utilities to those depending on the podcast. They can offer different options. Um, and you, if you want to just see the newest podcast, you can click on that. Uh, you can just listen to the podcast. Um, just press the play button, or you can collect a token for the podcast or both. Um, it just seems like a really fun, interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. And to- I just, I was just really bl- blown away with how the onboarding was so smooth which i think is the biggest challenge in in any uh crypto based product is what beyond just tokens is is like how are you going to get people to use the platform in a way and in a way that feels intuitive Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of ui ux seem to have gone out the window for multiple years Yep. In Web3, mostly, I think, just driven by the fact that it was a lot of techies mm-hmm. uh, and and ends driven products. So your engineers don't necessarily care so much. I don't want to say don't care so much, but their focus is on the technology, not on the usability. We're starting to see that shift. And I think pods uh, dot media. Fantastic onboarding process. Yep. Fantastic uh, UI. Very friendly. Even now. Well, and you and I, we're both the type of people that are okay with putting up with those kinds of snags in technology because we're totally. trying new stuff. We expe- It's like the type of person that likes playing a beta and you know there are going to be bugs, but you want to be there when it's new. And in fact, when it finally releases, some of the excitement kind of wears off at that point because it's a little more polished and now everybody's playing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're both the type that like that. We like... We do. And... and I'm I'm willing to put up with the bugs because I know that's part of the process and it's kind of fun just to be there in the early stages. What's funny with this was they were saying it's a private beta. I don't get that feeling from it at all. It does not feel like it's in that phase. It feels like it works. <clears throat> excuse me. It works pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. I think that um they aren't ter- throwing the term private beta around loosely i think that right. they they clearly care about the product's usability yeah um where maybe most most crypto products that are saying they're in private beta still need to be in alpha <laughs> well that's part of the crypto mentality too it's the same personalities where it's like move fast and break things yeah. and uh you know that's often mentality in in crypto and I think that's okay. I, I uh-huh. think that that is the right, right mentality when you're, when you're building, um, but when you're onboarding, you maybe, want it maybe, to be functional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like onboarding, you know, they've onboarded seventy or so podcasts, right? Um, not an insignificant amount when you consider that they onboard each one individually, right? And have direct relationships with with the podcast with with each podcast team uh-huh. um yeah well I, and I'm just excited. the way it integrates into warpcast when you post it there and then you can just go to the what's that called again on warpcast the the, the frame window, the frame right and it's just fully integrated where you can mint it straight from that and it's all yeah. running on base it's all very slick very smooth yeah and as if you share the podcast using the referrer link you earn if somebody you can earn if if somebody buys uh let's say mints it they share the the network fees yes uh with the with the referrer and the podcast team so yeah. very user friendly all around uh, yeah and i, I mean think... some of the some of the sorry i'm interrupting you no 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 it's fine some of the top trending they're getting like thousands of tokens collected yeah so that's awesome yeah. for them what a what a what a great time to be in the space light years from where we once were yeah in uh, in a very short time five years yeah crazy what a good talk yeah we're on well hey 
have an awesome week. You too. Cool.